I'm not married to her. <laughs> For now. <laughs> Well, Gabe's getting pretty good at sign language, you know. <coughs> I just, I do that and it turns the mic on. Uh, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Welcome back to church this evening. Glad to have each of you back. Uh, let you all in on a little secret before we go any further. Uh, we were talking about having a, the men cooking a breakfast for the women next Sunday morning. Amen. Yes. <laughs> I stay in good for Valentine's Day. For Valentine's Day. For the women. You know, the yeah. men do it. We're going to have red eggs. Red's my yeah. favorite color. You ever seen red eggs? I want to know who's buying eggs. Who's the richest one? That's better. Well, we're going to take up a special offering. <laughs> <laughs> I'll call it Coop Swarm right there and get some eggs. There you I go. I probably would. He probably would. I'll yeah. ask him. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no, we'll get it all taken care of as far as that goes. But this, uh, what I said Lynn would do is tell Miss Sandy and Bob make biscuits probably. I, don't, I, just, uh, I forgot to tell it this morning. What time? Uh, I was thinking this day at 10. He would tend to have a service at 11 and That'd be good. Why don't you just have Sunday school at Leon? Well, whatever God leads us, just yeah. Mike just come prepared to teach. Adam come prepared to preach. We'll do whatever happens. Whatever, whatever. Yeah. Our bellies will be full. <laughs> yeah, our bellies will be full. We might have to set it up. Right, didn't we come at 8 o'clock last time? The man did. Yeah. The man come at 8. So, yeah. what does it mean at 8 next Sunday morning? We'll get everything bought and lined out. And yeah. Just have it here. Well, we've got Wednesday night too to discuss and whatever, but uh, yeah, we'll uh, well actually all we need if we can get biscuits is bacon and eggs and uh, and uh, milk and juice. Hash brown. Pardon me. Hash brown. Hash brown. Hash brown. <laughs> Gabe's in Georgia. The hash brown. <laughs> uh, Just bring your gravy, Sarah. I don't make gravy. <laughs> Sarah made the gravy last year. <laughs> Sarah can make the gravy. I don't, I don't care now. Well, it's it's you know the men treating the women, but the women can't ever let a man do anything alone. You know? <laughs> yeah. She said exactly right, right there. Like, right. Yeah. But, but anyway, I think it'll be a good time of fellowship. Well, invite people. You know, it's invite people. Hey, we got to invite Sherman. I'm sorry, that man. Uh, Somebody like Sherman. <laughs> what was that hash brown thing you made that day? Potatoes and cheese and eggs. Nothing and I think they're coming to the Valentine's dinner, so that'd be good. Mm -hmm. Did you hear what we were talking about? Something about breakfast. We're going to have a breakfast next Sunday morning at 10 o'clock at the church, okay? And then after that, we'll have our preaching or Sunday school, whatever we decide to have, we'll have then. Yeah. May just have preaching and testimony or Sunday school, never know. Uh, whatever God leads us to have. But I think it's a good idea, it'll be a good time. We need to recognize our Valentines. Yep. Are you going to post that on our page for those who didn't get to come Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'll, I'll try to remember to tell my mom. But yeah, I'll be sure and tell your mother. And yeah. Invite your dad. I know, but you got to have faith. What did we talk about this morning? We got to have faith. Yeah. All right. Lynn, do you have a song? We'll get on with our service. Just, uh, Page 170 in the old book. 170 in the old book. <clears throat>
Stephanie, would you care to open us in prayer this evening? Praise your name, to just lift your name tonight, Lord God. We thank you for this morning's service and for how your presence was here. And we just praise you, God, for all that you're doing in our lives. We thank you for hearing and answering prayer, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that you would um, continue to be with us in this evening's service. Please be with Adam and with Teddy and anyone else, Lord, tonight that you need to share. And pray that you just work in our hearts, that we would uh, please you in all we do and say, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We have any prayer requests this evening? You know. My mom wanted me to ask for prayer again for my dad because he um, has that abscess in his mouth and it's really causing a lot of pain. Okay. I'll put him on here this morning. I'll put him on here times two. Okay. Um, I really have a burden on my heart for Donna. I, I just want to see. Yeah. I know yeah. she's on our list, but I, I really want us to remember her and God will calm her and mm -hmm. give her peace and comfort as she goes through this and mm -hmm. guide the doctors. She told me that she'd be in um, the procedure at not 9 o'clock and I told her I'd set my alarm. I did. Yeah. <laughs> Adam just literally had me ask her what time it was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we need to take a moment and pray for Think about it at 9 o'clock in the morning. Think about her. Say a little prayer for her. Well, don't wait till 9 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I think she said she's leaving at like 6.30 or so, but I think it's the better. Yeah. But, you know, just remember her. Yeah. But, you know, when she came in this morning and I spoke to her, I said, how are you today? She said, I'm nervous. Now, I'm sure you would be. I've never had to go through anything like that, but I'm sure you'd be very nervous and concerned. Tomorrow, since, since uh, Logan's in there, and say a little prayer with my class. I don't know if I'm brave enough, but I'm. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can pray about that too. So, just yeah, let... well, take a moment of silence, and if anybody wants to pray. Yeah. How many times were they thrown in prison for praying? You know, and so that's but, um, if you get thrown in, we'll come and bail you out. Yeah. Let's not be too hasty. <laughs> 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 I ain't lost it over the money, but yeah. we need the money. <laughs> she really loves it. Yeah. Amen. 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 Okay. Anybody else have anything? Let's just go to prayer right now and pray about these things. Pray about uh, Donna and, and Stephanie, you know, what she's talking about doing tomorrow. This and, and Burton, let's pray for Burton. Let's just go to prayer right now and pray about these things. God, as we come to you once again, we thank you, Father, for the opportunity that we have to come out here, Lord. Lord, we thank you for each one that's here tonight, Father. Lord, we thank you for your Holy Spirit that we feel here tonight, Father. Lord, we thank you for your Holy Spirit that we feel here tonight, Father. Lord, we thank you for your Holy Spirit that we feel here tonight, Father. Lord, we thank you for your Holy Spirit that we feel here tonight, Father. Lord, we thank you for your Holy Spirit that we feel here tonight, Father. Lord, we thank you for your Holy Spirit that we feel here tonight, Father. You know that you're in control and there's nothing He's wrong there, Lord. 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 Lord.
Where's Macy? Macy have a song tonight? Anybody have a song or testimony or anything? And we're kind of small in number, but we can praise God. Amen. Where's our amen group? <laughs> yeah, where's our amen group, Briar? You need to. Amen. Huh? Where's our amen group? He played all day. <laughs> He's tired. Amen. You know, I'm, I'm glad to be back this evening. Glad for this beautiful day God gave us. You know, the sun down was beautiful. And, you know, I was talking with Bob this morning. We was talking about up, up on the, oh, up north where they had the wind chill of way below 100 degrees. Negative 100 degrees. You know, we, we can't imagine that. You just look how God spares us, how he takes care of us. You know, we had a, we had a wind chill down in the single digits, maybe the teens and, you know, we were just freezing to death, but can, yeah. I can't imagine what what those folks went through. But God really takes care of us. And then, then he, on the other hand, he turns around and gives us 50-degree weather today. You know, just... Yeah. Yeah. Now, who's, who's in control of that? You know, you know it's... Uh, if you say there's no God, you're a fool. Yeah. Take care, takes care of us all the time. He does in many different ways. Yeah, I'm a teacher. I've tools up in the truck for me now. I yesterday. Right. Yeah, I thought, man, it's nice out here. <laughs> and I figured, well, I'm just going to go out. It's going to take me a few minutes. I'm going to freeze. And once I get out there, it's pretty nice. You know? yep. God, takes, you know, God takes care of us. Yeah. Yeah. I talked online with a friend of mine, and she said she'd taken a walk today. They just got back from a walk. It was really nice. And I, and I told her how nice it was under my electric blanket <laughs> sitting in the recliner. <laughs> but I thank God for that too. Yes. Yep. And God's so good to us. He is. Yes, He is. We just have, need to have more faith and, and, you know, lean on Him more. Just trust in Him more. Just, like our lesson this morning, we have the faith it will happen. Yep. You know, we had to pray for, for God's will, not our will. You know, our will differs a lot than God's will. Yeah. We just had to pray for God's will to be done. And I didn't understand that when I was a, a child that we prayed. You know, this is my dad pray. This is before I was ever saved. And he'd always say, God's will, you know, let God's will be done. Well, I didn't know what God's will meant. Well, I still don't know what God's will is. You know, I know what I know what God's will is. He wants everyone to be saved and go to heaven. But I don't know what God's will in my life is. I don't know what yeah. what I'm here for yet. You know, I'm just. But it, I better find out pretty soon because I'm getting up in the years. But you know, we don't know what God's will is. Uh, like I've heard Mike talk about his dad. God's will was that Mike's dad would be saved before he before he died, mm -hmm. and he was. You know, we don't know what when his will is going to happen. Mm -hmm. Does anyone else have anything? You know, in Mark it says, if we ask anything according to His will, we have what we ask. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if we find out what God's will is, then there we go. Yeah, there we go. You know, well, Teddy, you, you can't see it, but we can see that you're doing God's will. Well, maybe, maybe you can't see it, but we can, and that's and that's what's important. You know that that we can see it. You may not realize it, you know, but we realize it. Well, that's my true. prayer is, Mike, that people can see that God's will is through me. Yeah. Yep. You know, I'm I may not know. You know, maybe just coming out here sweeping the sidewalk or something. Mm -hmm. But I want people to see God's will in me. Amen. I'm not a speaker. I'm not a teacher. And I definitely can't sing. So I just. Uh, but you do it. You know. I mean, you, I do. You're there. I try. You're up there. You're doing it. You know. You're doing what God wants you to do. I, you know. I, that's I, the that's the thing. You're there. You're up there, right? I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> By the power of God. Yeah. It's, God's it's, it's not. It's nothing that I do. It's what God does. I'm like Adam. Whenever when I come up here, I always pray. God remove me, mm -hmm. remove Teddy, mm -hmm. throw him out. You know, yep. you take over. Let your Holy Spirit lead the way. You know, yep. Adam, um, when you were praying this morning, and, and when you said Amen, I thought, well, 
he didn't ask God to remove him mm -hmm. and let, and I thought that was really unusual. And then then it clicked yep. in Adam, and he's like, "Whoa, wait a minute, yep. God, I got to get out of the way and let you have it." And yep. uh, it shows we're human, doesn't it? Yep. Yeah. Oh yeah. But I mean, but it was one of those things that was because. I knew that he was going to do that because that's what he does. He doesn't want anything to come through him or be about him. And then when he acknowledged it, it was like the world went back on its axis. <laughs> well, we don't, if we do things to glorify ourselves, we're doing it in vain. You know, we need to do things to glorify God. Like Stephanie was talking about, she may get in trouble for doing this. She's doing it for God. She's not doing it for Stephanie. That's why you stand up there and talk because I'm sure you don't really want to be up there. But I, I you do it because it's important to God. I'm trying to glorify God. Yeah. Oh, you all going to sing? Good. Amen. <laughs> Jesus loves me. Uh, Looks like that. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. You all gonna sing it? Yeah. Yeah. Ready? Jesus loves me. Yes, I know. For good thank you Peter. that was good yeah you know that's uh that's probably one of the first songs that we've all learned mm -hmm. is jesus loves me but how true is it yeah. jesus loves us he loves us all Anyone else have anything? Then you'll have a song, Betty. <laughs> All right, Adam, I'll turn it over to you. All right. <clears throat> Thank you. Well, I'm put this on because I know I won't stand in front of this mic so I've done got out of that habit I was I was standing back here because I was scared you know I had something to grab a hold of now I'm kind of you know uh, if I don't forget to move God out of the way you know but that made an impression on somebody I'm sure as uh, God reminded me of that this morning uh, we're going to be over in uh, Galatians chapter 6 uh, tonight uh, somewhere we've been I don't know these verses, but uh, I heard a story, and I can't help but share that story with you because it uh, was actually a little video, and I haven't, I haven't uh, forgotten it. And a man was teaching a class. He was uh, teaching, looked like he was teaching maybe high schoolers or uh, maybe college-age students, but it, it was good. And um, as you're finding Galatians chapter 6, I... I want to share that with you as I start this message tonight. And uh, 
I got to run back here and get my prop because I went back here and got it earlier and I forgot to grab it. If everybody's seen that, you know, and uh, you're, if you're familiar with that, you're probably going to notice that it, it's about bearing one another's burdens, and and we've been there, uh, you know, with that. But uh, with the story, I I went back and, and I looked for an actual glass so you could see through the glass, but I found this styrofoam cup. But the way the story is, is the man was telling the story and he had a he kept had a cup of water. And he asked the class, he said, how much do you think that weighs? Has anybody got a guess what this cup weighs? 16 ounces. Okay. We'll go to 16 ounces, right? 8 ounces. 8 ounces, maybe. It's an 8 ounce cup. It's 8 ounces of water, maybe. 16 ounces. So, <laughs> we, we hold this and we think, well, this ain't too heavy, right? Well, if I stay up here and hold this straight out for an hour, all I think about is holding this cup, and I've got it for an hour, it begins to get heavy. I probably get pain in my hand or my arm, neck. <laughs> I hold this all day, and this is all I think about, is this cup. At the end of the day, I've probably got pain in my shoulder, and my elbow, part of my back. My legs is probably getting tired. Now if we continue to hold this cup for a week and never look for no help, if Sarah walks up here right now and maybe stands here and lets me set my arm on her shoulder, and all I have to do is hold the cup and she holds it right here, how much is that going to help me? I'm going to be able to hold that cup for a lot longer, right? And where I'm going, Sarah's coming up to help me bear my burden, which she does a lot. Just as each one of us should. But I didn't forget that video, you know, and he was teaching that class, and he was teaching them about life as he taught that class. He really wasn't teaching them Bible. But how much could we share that cup and that weight? And it really brings it to life of when we well, you know if we hold that out there for an hour, we're ready to give up in an hour. I'm sure I would be. I could just in that little short amount of time, I could tell the difference. Well, the weight of the cup never changed, did it? It still weighed, if we said 16 ounces. The weight of the cup stayed 16 ounces. But the pain and the hurt and everything went along with it got worse and worse and worse. The longer we held out there. But the weight never changed. Still the same thing. And just as we look back at Galatians chapter 6 again, we're going to read a few verses, and if you're able, we'll stand for the reading of God's Word tonight. Starting in verse 1. And brethren, if I be a man overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself lest thou also be tempted. Bear ye one another's burdens, so fulfill the law of Christ. For if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. But let every man prove his own work, then shall he shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. For every man shall bear his own burden. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in good, all good things. Be not deceived. <coughs> God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to the flesh shall reap after shall of the flesh reap. Corruption, but he that soweth of the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we appreciate the throne of grace once again this evening, dear Lord. We just thank you for another opportunity to be able to come and stand and to preach your word. I thank you for the ones that's made their way out tonight, dear Lord. I pray you be with the ones that uh, was unable to make it out, dear Lord. And we have a lot of those special prayer requests, dear Lord. We had prayer earlier for Donna and 
And Burton, dear Lord, I just pray that you be with each one of them. I pray that you be with uh, everything that we got planned out here, Lord. You know, as we look on this month, and, and now we threw a, a couple different dinners in there, dear Lord. I just pray that the, the invites that we give out, dear Lord, that it will be an inviting situation, dear Lord, that the people can come in and see the loving and caring uh, place that uh, Mount Olive is, dear Lord. And as we look in tonight, as Bearing one another's burdens, dear Lord, and we think about that cup and that weight, dear Lord, you know, it's, uh, how much help it would be if just somebody come and uh, uh, stood there, dear Lord, and laid their shoulder and just uh, said, here, let me help you carry your weight, dear Lord. I just pray that each one of us could uh, uh, be very strong in that, dear Lord, and that we can understand and see that and uh, be able to step in when somebody needs that help, dear Lord. And I pray most of all tonight that you just uh, move me out of the way, dear Lord. Use me as your mouthpiece. Don't let uh, people ever look upon me, dear Lord. Let them see Jesus Christ. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know, as I got to this, and, and like I said, this was very familiar verses, but, you know, as, as God brought me that video, you know, and you think about, well, you're just sitting around and you watching videos, but there's so many times that those videos are so enlightening. And, you know, and I couldn't get past that, the weight of that cup. I almost preached this message this morning. But God said, and we, we know that that wasn't right. We was on key with where we should have been this morning. Hey, even when Amanda, she opened her Bible up and she said, that is right where I opened my Bible up. Hey, that is guaranteed you're on the right page. I am where God wanted me to be. And, and, and we're at where we're at tonight because you know what? It, the ones of us that is in here tonight are, are the ones that are ready to carry other people's burdens, I believe. You know, it, it's not uh, our, our really... Young uh, Christians that maybe uh, are coming a few times a, a, a year or just a, a few times, a, you know, in services and things. We're here. We're the ones. We're the ones that have the, the, the growth and the strength to be able to take on these burdens and help these people carry through these burdens. Hey, we may not talk on every scripture to, or verse tonight, but uh, we're going to read back over and back to verse 1. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. You know, if somebody's there and they're overtaken, let's help them. Let's, 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 let's build them up. Let's give them that. You know, and if they're overtaken, they're, they're caught in something. You know, and when they get caught in those things, and, and we can think about it, we probably all got a friend or a family member that has been somewhere to where they, they, they've gone out of it and, and they get caught right back in it and they need somebody to lean on. You know, they finally set their cup of water down. They've been holding it for a long time. And somebody finally came along and helped them out and said, here you go. And they set their cup of water down and... Now they're right back over there ready to pick it back up. They really didn't leave it and give it to God. And that's where we come in. We've got to help these people. And a lot of times, it is hard. Because, you know, I thought about it today, and I told Sarah on the way down, we went down and ate uh, lunch today with uh, Megan and her family, uh, some of her family, and I told her on the way down, I said, I said, man, that's the best church service I've been in in a long time. It was good this morning. I said, I told her, and she didn't know what I was talking about, and I never did really explain myself. I said, but, I said, but man, that devil trying to take that away from me. He's fought me all day because he knows I got built. There was burdens that was carried right there this morning. I'm telling you, when I when them kids was up here screaming amen, and, and you might, you know, they loved it just to, just to be loud. We remember being kids, and everybody, if the group was being loud, you want to be loud right with them. But how much that, I mean, it just, I mean, it melted me. I was just like, oh, man, this, this is it. I could, I could listen to that every day, uh, every church service. Just have those kids here. You know, because there's very few churches that's got that. There's a few. I mean, we should count ourselves very lucky when we have 10 or 12 kids for a Sunday school. Very lucky. And, and it's good. And, and we, need to, we need to keep them here. And, and, and bear those kids' burdens. Those kids have got a lot more burdens than what we had when we grew up. And I speak of that. And I graduated not less than 20 years ago. And they have got a hundred times more burdens than what I had coming through school. And I'm talking from what, what, where Stephanie's at in grade school right on up. These, these parents and the people that's out here driving them now, they don't, they, they don't do it like we do. 
And these kids have burdens. We don't think about that, these kids having burdens and burdens that we need to carry and help these kids pack them home. But we do. There's kids out here holding that cup of water every day. When they get on the school bus, they're holding that cup of water. When they go to school, they're holding that cup of water. And when they leave, they're holding it. And a lot of times they come in, and I can remember this, and I'm sure Stephanie's experienced it. When I was at school, there's a lot of them kids that said, Here, hold my cup. Hold my cup for just a minute. It's sad. I'm not trying to put you in a sad mood tonight, church. But it is. Those kids were there, and they was just, Hold my cup for a minute. Help me. That was my hardest thing to quit in teaching. Was the being of that availability. I'll never forget those two girls at lunchtime. And I was sitting at my desk and I would sit at my desk at lunchtime and I had one of them old flames you pulled out. And I would sit and I would kick my feet up on that thing. <laughs> and because, you know, it's lunchtime. I, I didn't, wasn't doing nothing. At least I was taking it easy and I kicked my feet up on that thing and sat in my chair. And I, my door was open. And they busted through the door. And they said, you're a preacher, ain't you? I said, yeah, I'm a preacher. And those two girls run through there and they said, we've got to ask you some questions. And there was some, girl, some kid down the hall trying to preach about the devil and hell and all kinds of stuff. And not our devil and hell. He was way off in some other field talking about devil stuff. And, and I told them, I said, and they was, they was worried, man. They thought, you know, they, they was just they, the end of the world's here. I had to bury their burden right there. They, they both brought a big old glass in there. And, and we need some answers. And it gave me a chance. Hey, they asked me. I, I'm a liberty. I can tell them whatever I want to tell them. Then. They opened the door. I'm not going against any uh, laws or whatever the school's got. When they come in and they asked, I need some help. I need an answer. Well, they're looking for it. I can give it to them now. I gave it to them anyways. But, you know, if... Uh, uh, but you know what? I, I, it was it was the opportunity. Jump up on that. Pick these people's cup up. Help them out. You know, and, and it's it's great. Man, verse two, bearing one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. And verse three, for if any man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. We've all had a time when we've been there. Man, I, I, I'm just I'm something. Man. I got my black suit on, my black tie, my white shirt. Man, I'm something. Yeah. As, as you, you know, we went down to Nate, and as you walk in Tudors, you get looks when you got a suit on. You get looks when you went in when I went in the grain center there. Oh, I got and I seen an old friend I used to work with while I was in Grants, and that's probably the reason I was at Grants. Because he said he, I hollered at him. I don't think he noticed me. You know, he's dressed up like that. And, and I, I, I hollered at him. I said, hey, how you been doing? And uh, at the end of our conversation there, he said, he said, well, I was afraid you were going to sell me insurance or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, but we, 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 we was there at that time. You know? Sort of. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. I was going to try. Man, I wish I had thought of that. That's awesome. <laughs> I said, well, I could sell you some insurance. Maybe insurance from Jesus Christ. Man, I've never thought about it. I, I'll not forget that one. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> but you know what? I don't want to be that. And it's just like this morning when I stopped my message. And most people probably wouldn't have stopped that. But hey, God put that on my heart. I forgot my part. I like what Buddy said. We're all human. I might forget that again. And I'll probably stop in the middle of my message if God lays it on my heart. To say, move me out of the way again. Because I don't want people looking on me. I, I am nothing. I am. I'm just something. I told the God Jesus. Yeah. You might think, well, now the preacher don't think that. Well, I am. Any, any one of us Servant. could be the other. We are. We're a servant. We're a slave to God. Yeah. We don't like using those terms. And somebody said that this morning. We, we don't like using those terms. I think it was. Teaching Sunday school, you know, of being in that, being a servant. I'm a servant to God. We should all be a servant to God. Am I a perfect servant? Absolutely not. Thought about that all day today. After I met the guy, I was like, well, you know, I could have, he was living down camp, and I should have said, well, what my all did I know? And that brings me up to another point of my message, and that's James, James 5 and 16. Confess your faults one to another. 
Pray for one another. That ye may be healed, the effectual and fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And that's a man or a woman. That a fervent prayer. When we go to God. And and it's funny, I had just asked Sarah, I said, can you message Dawn and ask her what time her um, a procedure is tomorrow? Because at 9 o'clock in the morning, I hope I don't forget, and something bad ain't going on at work, that at 9 o'clock, I can stop and watch first something going on, I'll still stop at 9 o'clock. As long as my little brain don't forget about it, I'm going to pray for Dawn. It may be a five second prayer if it's busy. Or it might be a 10 minute prayer. But either way, I'm opening the throne up to make intercession for God. And help her out. I wish you'd be ready for that. If somebody's got something on, I want to bear that burden for her. Yeah? I want to help her carry her glass. She's been coming to our church. She's one of us. She done got her one time. She visited one time. Now she's ours. She got her own pew now. Yeah, she got her own pew back there. That's where, that's where Donna's at. You know? And so she's one of ours. Let's carry that burden. Verse 4, But let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself and not in another. Let's prove ourselves. Let's get to where we need to be. And that is examine ourselves. We just had a message on that and just went over a Bible study on that of examining ourselves. Are we doing everything we can do to care for one another's burdens? Probably not. But we can strive to do a little bit better. We can always pick up maybe one more burden. You ever think maybe somebody don't have a, maybe right here in your church and you really don't know it and God set up a breakfast next Sunday morning just because they didn't have nothing in their cupboard? Maybe. I don't know. We may never know that. We may think that everything's all right with that person because they're not if that now if they ask for help, I'm sure their cupboard wouldn't be empty. Probably be more than all of us combined's got in one cupboard, but you know what? Let's do that. Let's let's care for those people. Let's let's get there. Let's verse, <coughs> verse five. For every man shall bear his own burden. Now, Pastor, you just told me to carry somebody's burden. Well, guess what? Just because you helped me carry this cup, when Sarah comes up here and I lay my arm on her shoulder, I still got my burden. I still want to bear it. But man, if Sarah lets me lay my arm on her shoulder, man, how much that's going to help me. I still got my burden. Man, how much is that? I'm going to get through there. My arm probably not going to get in pain. My hand's probably going to get numb. Sarah's probably going to get wet. I'm going to dump a water on her. But she was still there. And even thinking about that, we may, get a, we may go through a little bit of pain. What if I did? My hand slipped and I dumped that water on Sarah. Still ain't going to hurt her. She was still standing right there. She's still helping me get through that. And I'm still carrying my burden. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in good th in all good things. We're all taught in the word. Let's go out and share it. Teach these people the good things. Verse seven: Be not deceived. God is God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Yeah. There's there's two messages in this as you read this. It's bear one another's burdens and then what we should read. What we sow and what we read. Now you think about it. If we go around sowing and Sarah goes around and, and she's got two shoulders and she bears my burden on this shoulder and, and Stephanie's burden on this shoulder, she's sowing a lot of good seeds, isn't she? Now probably when her time comes and she's got a cup that she can't hold and she really needs some help with, God's probably going to send her so probably four times that help. Because when we do something, we're not going to outgive God. And if we give two shoulders, He's going to give us ten. Because I always hate to think and compare that to money. It don't mean you put a hundred dollars in the offering plate, you're going to get a thousand. That means God's going to outbless you. He is going to outgive you. Now, I think He does that in every part. 
anything that you do for him and, and you give and if, if you throw money in the offering plate if you don't throw it in there grudgingly he's probably going to out give that now, I'm not telling you to do that but if you do that and it's just you know that that's God's anyway I look at it that way anymore he gives me a good paycheck but or part of it it's gone I mean I don't think nothing about it Sarah don't think nothing about it it's his he provided it he made a way for me to get to there you know and, and with that and, and, and we as a church are going to sow seeds you know if all of us get together if we all combine and this spring we plant in the garden and we all got together got all the tractors and the rakes and the hose and the shovels and all the seeds that we can come up with how big would that garden be when we sow that garden be a huge garden, wouldn't it? I mean, we'd have every field planted on top of Mount Olive up here. Mm -hmm. And then the and the fruits that we would get out of that, that God would provide through us working in that garden. If we sowed that much, if we sow seeds of Jesus Christ that much, we're going to reap the benefits. We're going to see and we're going to see 28 change to 29. 29 change to 30. 30 change to 31. 31 change to 40. It's just it's going to keep growing and growing and growing and, and, and we have to be there I always want more and more and more I want to see God get more and more and more I'm not, I'm not saying that selfishly or anything about this church I want to see God get that He wants everyone to say yeah. and if we're not sowing the seeds and sharing God's word then who's going to do it it's like the scripture, and I don't, I, I, it just comes to my mind. I can't place exactly where it's saying, but how are they going to hear without a preacher? And nobody tells them, we're all preachers. We all know and share God's word. And verse 8 For he that soweth to the, his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. You know, and that's it. If we sow to the world, we're going to reap in the world. Yep. We've heard these verses countless times in our lives. God's bringing them back to light to us. Maybe we need to share it with somebody. Maybe it's at the job. Maybe it's a school kid. Maybe it's at Kroger's when we go to buy bacon or something. Or get, uh, well, I think I can get I can get you an 18 pack of eggs and somebody else bring them up. But whatever it may be, it may be something that I had that experience in a grocery store today. What playing on that? Playing on nothing of that. But for a reason, I still had this old black suit on when I went in there. It wasn't nothing for me to show off with a black suit on. It was nothing about that. But still, they recognize. Man, that guy right there, he'd been to church a week. He kind of dressed up like a preacher. <laughs> you know, they're looking at something. They see something. That little flashlight that I was talking about this morning, they seen it. That flashlight was shining. When I went into Tudors, I don't know why this is on my mind so much, but there was a family that was coming in, and I waited to hold the door for them. Ain't nothing I was doing. That was just being nice. That's just West Virginia. That ain't nothing to do about church. That's just holler boy yank it there yeah. you know it's hold his door and, and that's what it is but you know what there, there was this big smile on those people's face yeah. because they recognized that hey this guy's dressed up and just a presence we made of that now if we go down the road and, and we're all sloppy and I mean what's there's times we're going to be that way we might be coming from work or something you know in the middle of the summer and you come home, you probably don't want to get real close to me, you know, if I've been out and had to work all day. But, uh, you know, but there, there's times of that. But if, but if we dress up just to spread God's Word, and I'm not talking in a suit. I'm just talking, you know, if we got good blue jeans and a t-shirt on, and we hold the door, we're shining God's light. Just a little thing like that, because they don't see it no more. It's not taught like it was. And they then they see in verse 9, let us not be weary in well doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Are we not every one of us in here going to reap something? We're going to reap everlasting life. 
We're going to be in heaven. I'm going to be in heaven with each one of you all. After you all get done seeing all your loved ones, I hope that we get to join back together. Have us a little party. You know, when we finish out and, you know, as we go along, if, and if we keep doing this, and maybe we're all around here 20 years together, think of the people we're going to lose over that 20 years or the next 30 years. There's some of us that's not going to be here in 30 years. You know? And, it, and it's just, it, it's, it's, it's life. It's the circle of life. But when we end 30 years to but I hope when that time, you know, when we get there and we can say, you know what? We done good work down there. Yeah? It was us together. We was working together. We kept the faith. Each one of us. And we kept the fire going. We kept it burning. We kept cutting wood and throwing it in the stove. Maybe even bringing a little coal once in a while. And verse 10, as we therefore... As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. You know what? we got to help everybody here. I'm going to finish with that right there. And Lynn, if you want to go ahead and get us a song. But I want you to think about that. And now, I don't think I've ever brought this out as far as my preaching. Or, or God has brought this out while I preached. I want to rephrase that. But as I read that verse and I studied that verse, you know, as we have, have therefore opportunity, I've told you about opportunities that I had just today. You've heard each person in here talk about opportunities that we've had. You know, I, I have opportunities at work. I'm like, he talks to people at work. He puts those opportunities there all the time. And we're doing good unto them men, right? Or women, or kids. Or whoever we're getting a chance to talk to. You know, there's one stick with you. I can remember when those two girls run through that door. And it was out of the ordinary. Man, what's going on? You know, a big fight out here. I'm going to go break it up. That's where my mind went to first. No, I got a question. I'm asking you a question about God. I mean, they, they honestly had fear in their... They thought the time was here. Yeah. Jesus was coming. I got to be ready. I want to be ready when Jesus comes. And I want to do good to those people. But right there in the end, we've already seen it this evening, especially into them who are the household of faith. Let's bear each other's burdens. Keep them held up right here. We've got people right here, whether it's 28 or whatever the number is back there. It's more than that. It's always If everybody was here hitting the same time, we didn't have no sickness or anything. We need to hold those people up. We got people that has got burdens right now. I challenge you in the morning at 9 o'clock, Donna's got a burden she's worried about. Bear that burden for her. And I tell you, if it's 30 seconds, try to remember it 9 o'clock, 30 seconds. And if you look down this 9 10, oh, that's okay. Well, 9 10. Go ahead at 9 10. Yeah. Help her out. Bear that burden. Because that right there, and that's what I read when I got to the end of verse 10, was who are of the household of faith, especially those people. And ours, especially those people are in Mount Olive Church. Let's bear their burdens. Let's help them. Amen. Let's sow their seeds. They're here for us. 41. All right. Page 41. The old book. Yeah. Old book. Good. No. New book. 41. Inside. Oh. Right. Front <laughs> cover.
good to us, you know, and that's uh, it's being in prayer for all the things we got going on. Uh, let's pass the word. I know I kind of sprung at last of the men up there with the breakfast next Sunday morning, but we'll make it happen. You know, uh, guys, if you want to want to be involved, or um, I'll be here about eight o'clock. Uh, well, I think we probably, I think we got pretty much about what we need to cook back here now. Uh, might have to bring a couple of things, uh, but uh, utensil wise, oh, yeah. Like, Last time we didn't have a whole lot, and we had some donations and things. So, uh, but we'll get together and get all the stuff picked up. Remember the Valentine's Day dinner is twenty fifth. Um, like who we want to. As long as we get their name back here and we know how much to cook for them, we're probably going to need that in the next week or so whenever they start buying stuff. So try to get them invited. Invite people to breakfast. You know, they ain't got to come no earlier. Be here at 10 o'clock. We'll eat at 10 o'clock, and then whenever we get done, we'll go in to wherever God leads us. I like what Teddy said. Either maybe Sunday school, maybe preaching, whatever. Or maybe both of them. I don't know. We'll see. But, uh, I think that's all that we got going on. We'll spread that out on the messenger and the Facebook. And have you run into somebody? What is it? Yep. We got women's Bible study Friday at Betty's house. And then the men's going to Mike's house. So that's at 6 o'clock. Yep. So 6 o'clock Friday. You better cook. You gotta go toasting those pizzas pizza, and microwave, really microwave, <laughs> barbecue wings, and toasting those pizzas. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, kids. I know how to make ramen noodles. <laughs> Briar. Praise, Praise the Lord. 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 Praise the Lord.